Archives. And I'd like to tell you about our new synth DIY kit that's going to be coming out real soon. It's called the Hydronium. The Hydronium is an acid synth. And when I say acid synth, I don't necessarily mean that it's a Roland clone, because the Hydronium is not a clone of a Roland or anything. But when I say acid synth, I do mean that it's a one oscillator mono synth with your choice of sawtooth or square wave. It has a simple decay envelope and the option to add glide and dynamic accents to individual notes. And of course, the main feature of an acid synth is a resonant low pass filter. In the case of the TB303, you have the so-called transistor ladder filter. But here in the Hydronium, on the other hand, we're using the classic two pole state variable filter, and that is the source of its juicy resonant sound. The Hydronium has a nice combination of MIDI control and CV gate control. You can see here on the front panel, it has CV and gate inputs, a filter volts per octave input, and an audio input that mutes the internal oscillators. And down here on the belly of the unit, you have eight more CV jacks, including your MIDI to CV outputs. It has a post-glide volts per octave output, which is kind of a nice feature because you don't get that in every MIDI to CV converter. There's also a trigger out and a MIDI velocity output. And then for the CV inputs, you get pulse width modulation input, decay time CV input, glide time CV input, velocity input, and an audio mix input that sums with the internal VCO. Here's a look at the main circuit board from the Hydronium. This is a fairly detailed build. There's about 150 parts, but the instructions are very clear and they walk you through step by step. It's all through hole parts and there's no surface mount. And down here on the belly of the unit is the expansion PCB. It's only a little bit more work to put that together and you connect it to the main board with individual stranded insulated wire. Taking a quick look at the back panel, there's a DIN5 MIDI input, an effects loop send and return, 12 volts DC adapter input, and your main audio output on quarter inch jack. Let's go over the controls really quick. Up in the top left corner is the fine tuner. Next to it is the dynamics knob. Hydronium's dynamics knob is like the accent on a Roland, except it's bipolar, meaning the accented notes can be louder or softer than the normal notes. And here's your filter cutoff frequency, filter resonance, filter envelope depth. And here's the waveform selector. You can choose a sawtooth or a rectangular wave. And in the rectangular position, this knob lets you vary the pulse width from square wave to thin pulse. Now let's listen to that. And of course it has a pulse width modulation input. So let's just patch an LFO to that and see what it does. You also have the option to use the internal envelope generator as a pulse width modulation source via the switch. And down here on the bottom row, you have the glide section, the envelope generator decay time, and of course the volume control. Hydronium gives you the option of full-time glide, where every note gets a glide effect, or legato glide, where only the tied notes have the glide effect applied to them. And the legato glide is available for both MIDI control and CV gate control. And here is the envelope control switch. In the up position, it's a standard triggered decay envelope. In the down position, you get a gated envelope where it sustains the note for as long as you hold it. One of Hydronium's unique features is its effects loop. The effects loop is positioned between the filter and the VCA, and that's a great spot if you want to use a distortion effect, because distortion tends to add noise to your signal, but since the effects return is before the VCA, the Hydronium acts like a noise gate, and so it's going to chop out any of the unwanted background sound that you'd ordinarily get by patching in a fuzz effect. Let's check it out. Right now I have a Boss SE70 multi-effects unit patched in to the Hydronium effects loop.
well, obviously this track needs some work, but I think you get the picture. Let's try some different stuff. effects loop and remember it's a pre-VCA effect send and so that's going to chop out any of the unwanted noise that you'd normally get by putting a distortion effect on a synthesizer. The last thing I'll demonstrate is using Hydronium as a lead synthesizer and you can do that by putting the envelope switch in gate mode where it's going to sustain the notes for as long as you hold them. And like any analog oscillator, it will go out of tune when you play the very high notes, but this one has a pretty decent range. Here we go. So you see it has its limits, but there's still enough range to play the funky stuff. Well, you can play some G-Funk with Hydronium too, no doubt, no doubt. Thanks for sticking with me through this video, and before I go, I better mention that it's also available in Eurorack format, then the Eurorack will come in either black or yellow, and the tabletop version will be available in black, in blue, and in yellow also. The purple one you see in this video is probably just a freak oddity and will never be seen again. But anyway, I think I covered everything at that point, and I'll be glad to answer any questions. Just let me know in the comments, and I'll get back to you. Thanks a lot.